The Colorado River Basin is a vast and diverse region of the western United States that contains an incredible bounty of plant and animal life, spectacular landscapes, and a population of over 30 million people. What the basin doesn't have, however, is an abundance of water. In fact, the basin continues to be the victim of an extended drought that threatens its current and future water supplies. Water leaders and other stakeholders in the basin understand how vital the region's water supplies are and how serious the situation could become. In 2012, the Colorado River Basin Water Supply and Demand Study was completed. It was the product of a comprehensive three-year effort to determine current and future water supply imbalances in the Colorado River Basin and areas of adjacent states that receive Colorado River water. The basin study was one that was commissioned by the Bureau of Reclamation and supported by the seven basin states as well as individual water providers like Central Arizona Project, uh, Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, Southern Nevada Water Authority, and others to take a look at what the potential for deficits in water supply in the Colorado River could be related to climate change or drought over the next 50 years or so. The results of this study are striking. Significant supply shortfalls in the basin are possible within the next 50 years. The study also sends the clear message to the river's stakeholders that now is the time to begin addressing potential future imbalances through continued conservation and reuse, as well as augmentation strategies and other methods. Once the results of the basin study were released, one of the first steps for Central Arizona Project was to conduct an assessment of what has already been accomplished within the CAP service territory, which includes more than 80% of Arizona's population and over 200,000 acres of irrigated agriculture. CAP uses 60% of Arizona's Colorado River water supply. This study was completed in late 2013, and it provides an insightful look at the state's significant and innovative successes to date. Arizona began developing formal conservation strategies over 40 years ago, with the passage of the Colorado River Basin Project Act in 1968. This legislation authorized the construction of Central Arizona Project and identified water efficiency as a priority for any project carrying Colorado River water into the state. Since then, Arizona has developed into a national leader in water management and regulation. A legal framework has been constructed in the state that requires mandatory conservation by all water users in the CAP service area a 100-year assured water supply for all new development, and encouragement of water recycling to offset the use of other water supplies. Some key examples of this water management structure include the 1980 Groundwater Management Act to address groundwater overdraft within certain regions of the state, the 1986 Lakes Bill, which limits the construction of new bodies of water used for recreation, landscaping, and scenic purposes. The 1986 Underground Water Storage Act, that allows for water to be stored in underground aquifers and retrieved through recovery wells. And the 1994 Underground Water Storage Savings and Replenishment Act, which consolidated Arizona's underground storage programs while creating a comprehensive regulatory structure. The 1989 decision in Arizona Public Service versus Long that ruled effluent water must be put to beneficial use. The 1992 adoption of U.S. and Arizona state plumbing codes requiring that new construction use water-efficient fixtures and fittings. And the 1995 Assured and Adequate Water Supply rules confirming that those acquiring Assured Water Supply classification in the state have demonstrated that they will be using primarily renewable water supplies. The CAP study looked at Arizona's water management regulatory framework, residential water use efficiency, the adoption of best management practices, and reuse. It identifies specific projects and programs that have proven successful and have significantly improved water use and reuse within the CAP service area and across the state. Arizona mandates municipal, industrial, and agricultural conservation within each of its active management areas. 
Arizona's best management practices for key categories of conservation measures have been adopted by water providers representing more than 90% of the CAP service area population. The largest municipal and industrial zone that CAP serves is the Phoenix metropolitan area. And its largest population center, the City of Phoenix, has maintained a water conservation program since 1982. And in 1986, Phoenix approved a new comprehensive conservation program focusing on water pricing reform, indoor residential water conservation, industrial and commercial water conservation, plant and turf irrigation efficiency, and water efficient landscaping. The basics of the Phoenix Water Conservation Program is education. We look at education for adults, we do education for children. We are out in the community because it's teaching them what's going on. Even though there may be some natural things that reduce our water use, we want them to know what's happening and things that they can do to help us. The original purpose of Central Arizona Project was to provide a source of renewable surface water to replace non-renewable groundwater. Over the years, greater emphasis has been placed on the state's water portfolio. Arizona and water conservation have gone hand in hand for, for decades. The water users in this state, out of necessity, have implemented and practiced water conservation um, for many, many years, but in 1980, the Groundwater Management Act that was enacted by the legislature required water conservation for municipal, industrial, and agricultural water users. The program has evolved to really push more and more um, folks off of groundwater and onto renewable water supplies, preserving that groundwater for times of shortage or for, for future uses. The state's agriculture industry has been focused on improving its water efficiency for decades. While water use in the Yuma area has been stable for the past decade, agricultural production has increased by more than a billion dollars. And over the past 40 years, agricultural water use has been on the decline in central Arizona. It's been dropping in the Tucson area since the 1970s and in the Phoenix area since the 1980s. Agriculture is required to employ approved water conservation measures, as are other water users in the CAP service area. One major influence has been Arizona's Groundwater Management Act. A lot of the growers um, knew that they had some issues underground because they were, they were kind of chasing their groundwater. They were deepening wells and there was a lot of uh, their power and energy needs to pump were increasing. And so they knew they were going to have to start doing some things to make their water go farther. I think the Arizona Groundwater Management Act brought that into focus for them um, a little bit more precisely. Farmers have made great strides in water awareness and efficiency since the late 60s, but they must balance the benefits against the costs. They're always looking for ways to reduce their water use, but it has to be in ways in which the bottom line pencils out. They have to be able to afford to make the investments uh, so that last drop of water that's saved actually is a benefit to their farming and their business. The CAP study found that in the agricultural districts surveyed, 96% of the acres being irrigated were employing technology that meets or exceeds an 80% water use efficiency. And losses from irrigation delivery systems in CAP's service area have been well below 10% since 1985. In recent years, that loss rate has fallen to less than 3%. To date, an estimated $750 million have been invested in delivery system and on-farm water efficiency improvements for irrigation districts in the CAP service area. This represents an investment of about $3,500 an acre. Arizona's water management regulatory framework encourages water recycling to offset the use of other non-renewable water supplies. This water reuse and reclamation provides for an expanded water portfolio. The great majority of effluent generated within the CAP service area goes to a wide spectrum of beneficial purposes, such as industry, agriculture, groundwater recharge, turf irrigation, riparian habitat, and, no less importantly, power generation. 
Water is used in the cooling of power generation plants throughout the country. But Arizona has an application that's unique, a nuclear power plant cooled by reused water. Palo Verde is the largest nuclear power facility in the United States. Uh, it's a three-unit facility. Palo Verde is a baseload facility, so it's in operation 24-7. Uh, it's the only nuclear power plant in the world <clears throat> that uses reclaimed water for its cooling. In Arizona, over 65% of sewage treatment plants distribute treated wastewater for reuse. In the metro Phoenix area, almost 100% of wastewater is reused. And Arizona's water regulations permit a wide range of reuse applications. As important as conservation and reuse are, those programs cannot be expected to compensate for the potential shortfalls that Arizona may experience based on the findings from the Basin Study. Additional sources of water will be needed to augment our current Colorado River supplies. A range of ideas are currently being investigated. We're doing things like exploring whether or not there is efficiency in ag to urban transfers, uh, trying to develop reuse programs where we might uh, reuse water that's now in brackish groundwater through types of, of treatment, including desalination. Ultimately, what, what happens is you, you, you get to a point where you can do no more conservation and you have to augment your water supplies with something else, whether it's local water supplies, uh, reclaimed water use, um, sustainable groundwater use, or importation of supplies from ocean desal or some, some type of project like that that would come in from outside of Arizona. Another highly beneficial use of reclaimed water is for restoration of wetlands. Wetland restoration can benefit not only our unique southwestern flora and fauna, but also provide protection from flooding and erosion. One location where multiple benefits are provided through wetlands restoration is the Trace Rios Ecosystem Restoration and Flood Control Project. Trace Rios is a seven mile long, 1500 acre riparian restoration, recreational environment, and flood control site in southwestern Phoenix. It consists of a flood protection levee, effluent pump station, emergent wetlands, riparian corridors, and open water marsh areas to replace existing non-native salt cedar in the river. The water for the project is highly treated effluent sourced from a local water treatment facility. Trace Rios is a work in progress that's paying dividends today and offering the promise of greater returns for the future. It showcases a range of benefits to be gained from wise and effective water stewardship. Native American communities have a long history of water stewardship. Within the CAP service area, Native American CAP customers continue to implement water conservation programs for their water systems. The Gila River Indian community, Ak Chin, Salt River Pima, Fort McDowell, and Tahona O'odham operate and maintain concrete-lined water delivery systems for their irrigation projects and use laser level, drip, and sprinklers so that their irrigation systems are as efficient as possible. The future of the Colorado River system depends on a delicate balancing act between water users, water uses, and the development of new solutions. The river stakeholders are a diverse community, and we hold a wide range of perspectives and expectations. It's a significant challenge to meet such a broad spectrum of needs while managing current and future water supplies. Yet answers will be found, as they always have been, through cooperation, planning, investment, and wise management. We understand that the path ahead won't be an easy one, and that Arizona's future Colorado River supplies are linked to the basin as a whole. But we also know that Arizona and its neighbors have a strong history of pulling together to create solutions. I think in the end, the states themselves realize that there is not a silver bullet to this issue. We're going to need a comprehensive set of projects in order to really make a strong effort in balancing the deficit that we see going forward.